All right, so uh, Joseph Stalin and how he comes to power, and we just went over some responses to the do now, so here we go. All right, I'll give you a second. So during the World War I unit, we talked about briefly the Russian Revolution. And when we talked about the Russian Revolution, we said that the Bolsheviks, led by a guy named Vladimir Lenin, overthrew the Tsar and turned Russia into a communist state. And this is the beginning of the USSR. Um, well, that guy Lenin, when he dies and they have to figure out who the successor is going to be, Stalin is going to be the guy that follows Lenin and becomes the leader of the Soviet Union. Um, he's a little bit different from uh, Lenin. So when Lenin dies, there's a couple of different people who could potentially lead. And the, the candidates are really down to Stalin and another guy named Trotsky. And Stalin uh, kind of emerges victorious. Uh, paranoid, suspicious, ruthless, those are all good words for him. And he is famous for executing political opponents and installing really cruel policies, uh, including forced famine and hunger and a lot of other things. Um, but this, this picture is kind of funny because it says, uh, how to make everyone happy? Kill all those being unhappy. And it's designed to be a joke. But in this particular case for Stalin, this is more true than we realize, okay? Um, you're going to, in the coming days, you're going to see what I'm talking about. The people who disagree with him are going to systematically disappear with regularity. And that's part of his strategy for maintaining power and loyalty. All right, I'll give you a second here. Um, throughout history, there have been some groups of people that are particularly scary. The NKVD may top them all. The NKVD is essentially Joseph Stalin's personal uh, police force. But what they really are more than anything else is his personal hit squad. The NKVD would evolve into what would later be known as the KGB. The KGB is essentially the Soviet Union's version of the CIA. So all of the things you think of the CIA as being, uh, the KGB was all of those things and more. Um, they are the ones who, uh, when Stalin decides he doesn't want to deal with you anymore, these are the people that make you disappear in the night, okay? A good example of this is the story of Leon Trotsky. Um, like we said earlier in the previous slide, Joseph Stalin was a paranoid, ruthless guy. So when Lenin died and, the, and who was gonna succeed him was down to Stalin and this guy, Leon Trotsky. When Stalin won, he wanted to, he decided he wanted to eliminate his political rival in Leon Trotsky. Leon Trotsky knew about Joseph Stalin and knew he was not to be trifled with. So Leon Trotsky ran away to the farthest place you could possibly run away to, okay? If we were to take out a globe right now and take a look at where Moscow is in Russia and where Mexico City is, you would realize that you pretty much can't get any further away from Moscow than Mexico City. Leon Trotsky was so scared that of Stalin that he ran away to literally the other side of the world. You couldn't get further away. Well, Stalin's NKVD found him there and assassinated him. So this is literally evidence that there is nowhere on planet Earth that anyone could hide that these people could not reach. Okay, this is some of the scariest stuff in human history. This group is ruthless, okay? 
Eventually, they will evolve into becoming the KGB, which became more of kind of an intelligence service as the Cold War went on, something more similar to our CIA. But the KGB's roots are in these same kinds of clandestine activities that the NKVD was engaging in. Uh, the guy that's in charge of Russia right now, Vladimir Putin, he is ex-KGB. Okay, so if we wonder why this guy is such a scary dude, that's part of the story, okay? Okay, last slide. So in addition to just being generally terrifying, uh, Joseph Stalin did try to kind of put forth some policies in the USSR that aimed to modernize and industrialize and generally improve the standing of the USSR. And these are all called five-year plans. So um, Stalin had several, maybe as many as 13 five-year plans that uh, he set a goal, he set a plan of action that would take five years to complete, and then by the end of that five years, that goal should be complete. So uh, many of his goals, as far as these five-year plans, many of these five-year plans are centered around industrial and economic development. And they're kind of built with, you know, a smart kind of approach to them. So, for example, his first five-year plan will be to kind of revolutionize agriculture in Russia. And a big part of that is because if we're going to support a large working class, we need to have enough food in order to support those people. So the first five-year plan was centered around agriculture. The next five-year plan was centered around industrialization, making machines and factories and transportation systems like railroads. The next five-year plan is military infrastructure, right? tanks and machines of war. And that's a big part of what they were in the middle of as the Cold War is going on. So Stalin is not all crazy, insane person, although he's got plenty of that going on. There is also some kind of directed and intentional plan for the USSR's improvement under Stalin. Now, how successful these five-year plans are and what the unintended consequences of them are on the people is a different story altogether. But at the very least, we can say that Stalin did have some ideas about how to improve the USSR, and he did have some kind of idea about how they would accomplish some of these goals. So in the interest of, you know, kind of getting an, a balanced understanding of what this guy is all about, his in ruthless insanity is one part of the story, but the other part is really this industrial and economic development in the form of these five-year plans that we should, we should at least be aware of also.